God, money, family time, tithing, Santa Claus, what? You have questions, I've got answers in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Paul here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Casa, here from my kitchen table here, have some coffee and answering some of your questions. Now, after just six episodes, of a biblical perspective about success, wealth, money, prosperity. There's been over 353,000 views on our YouTube channel for these six episodes, six episodes and 2.6 million minutes of watch time from many of you. We've asked for you to drop your thoughts. We've asked for you to drop your questions, your follow-ups in the comment section below. So we'd like to take this episode to get back to you. Before I begin, I'd like to announce a special contest for the special series that we do here on Sundays. Because what we discovered through December's Vlogmas series that many of you just loved these biblical perspective Bible studies. It's a little bit of a departure away from our traditional think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, and become a millionaire type series. So we decided to come up with a special name for these Sunday biblical perspective Bible studies. So with that being said, stay tuned to the end of this video and I'd like to announce a contest to involve you to come up with the name for these Sunday episodes. Just to give you a little bit of what we've been thinking about, we think about the title of Biblical Baller Breakdowns or God, Money, and You. Listen, we need your help and uh, we'd like to crowdsource a title for this. We'll announce a contest again and a winner of what they're going to receive at the end of this video. All right, so here we go. Let's begin. Ivan, what's some of the questions that people have from our Biblical Perspective Bible series here on Sundays. Number one, from Okaka Muo. Why do you want to become a millionaire? Are you not more valuable than that? So let me ask you the first question. Of course I want to become a millionaire. And of course I believe I'm much more valuable than a millionaire. So here's the first thing I look at when I'm, lo when I'm looking at my life, money, success, wealth, prosperity, is I'm a steward. So when much has been given, much has been expected. Whatever you pray for, be careful because God just might give you exactly what you've been praying for. And then when he gives it to you, you got to be able to do something with it. In one of the series that we launched it with was back to the parable of the talents. If you've given one talent, uh, two talents, five talents, whatever it is, whatever opportunities may come your way, you got to do the most with it. Listen, I come from no college background. I don't come from a pedigree where our family went to Harvard. We come from any uh, family wealth. I just feel that in my generation, I, with my last name, have an opportunity to do something special. And one of the first things was make $100,000 in my family, to make a $500,000 in my family, to make a million dollars in my family, because I believe I'm a steward of what's been given towards me. Now, I don't validate myself because of money. I don't say, oh, I've arrived and I don't have to work anymore. No, I believe that once something has been given to me, I have a responsibility to double it and to double that and to double that and to continue to crack open the potential that God has given me in my life. Ryan Stevens says, what are your thoughts on temporarily stopping tithing to pay off debt? I think it's a bad idea. You know, tithing is just like any other bill. It's, it's a muscle. You know, uh, do you temporarily stop paying your mortgage? You temporarily stop paying your rent? You stop, temporarily stop paying your cell phone bill, your Wi-Fi, your, your car payment, your insurance payment? Uh, you st temporarily stop eating food. No, it, tithing is a responsibility of you. Now, it's not God's fault that you overspent what he's given you. So what you have to do is say, what else can I cut down my expenses on? What do I have to self-sacrifice? Because I did overextend myself. And here's what I believe, man. It's either you discipline your situation or God or your situation will discipline you. So I don't think it's a good idea to temporarily stop tithing because what you're saying is, okay, God, when I'm ready, I'll give to you. But when the times are bad, I won't give to you because I believe that character, and which is what God is after, character is exposed not during the good times, character exposed during the tough times. And your chance right now is to expose what God kind of character you want to develop in your life. So I encourage you, do not stop tithing during these tough times. Cut back on other things that you are spending money on. Third question. Captivating the... NDC asks, how are you reading and understanding the Bible and worshiping Santa and Christmas? Isn't that a little pagan? It sure is a little pagan. You know, listen, the reason why I was wearing a Christmas hat wasn't necessarily a Santa hat. The reason why I have certain things that you might see in my house is not to captivate the current Christians. 
I'm trying to captivate the people that are not believing in God. I'm trying to captivate the people that aren't believing in Christ. I'm trying to captivate the people that are non-believers because I believe that my job is to convert non-believers into believers. And if I'm ticking off the current religious uh, folks that don't believe in these pagan type holidays, I get it. I totally understand. But you're not the audience I'm looking for. The audience I'm looking for are people who are lost so we can, they can be found. The people I'm looking for are people who are seeking wisdom and yet they're not finding it. And if a Santa hat or a Christmas tree makes them a little bit more relaxed to come watch my videos and consume our content, so therefore I have an opportunity to convert it. Well, amen, hallelujah, we've won another soul for Christ. So my brother, my sister, whoever you are, I'm not here to worship any pagan or Santa Claus or any uh, earthly holiday. I'm here to worship the Lord and have a relationship with him, not with a, not embrace myself in a religion. But uh, if that offsets you, I apologize if it offsets you. But uh, my job is to convert non-believers into believers and to make that approach a little less um, intimidating and uh, a little bit more welcoming to the non-believer. Fourth question. Courtney Bauer asks, I started investing in the last week. I want to, of course, grow my wealth. But once it has multiplied, how do you use it to further God's kingdom? That's awesome. Well, God bless you, sister. I uh, con want to continue to encourage you to do that. Um, listen, when I was making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines, I was able to contribute 200 bucks a month. When I was making 40000 50000 I remember one time I was a single father. I had a large cash flow month that month. I, I mean, closed some cases. I was faithful in my prayers. I was uh, faithful in uh, uh, my supplication. I was f f faithful in my prayers to, uh, to, to be a blessing to other people. And then God blessed me. And remember that month, he, uh, I, I, I came up fifth, my first $50,000 income month. And I'm sitting there in church because I didn't have, you know, $5,000 in cash. So I was writing a check. And the person next to me, as I was writing this check, freaked out that I wrote a $5,000 check. <laughs> By the way, back to the tithing question. It was a muscle. I'm, like, I'm, writing, I'm actually writing a $5,000 check in church, which is equivalent to five, six months of earnings that I had in the military. But God blessed me. And uh, I remember writing that check. And I remember asking myself, is this going to be a $10,000 check next month? Is this going to be a $100,000 check next month? And the more I kept tithing and giving, it's amazing how God just reciprocated all that. And so my encouragement to you is as you continue to manifest and magnify God's blessing, it, uh, it is in your incumbent behavior, if you are a believer, to, to embrace tithing and to be a huge blessing to other people. And now we've, we've done you know, more than just tithing. Now we're investing. Now we're, we're giving. There's so much more that you can do with making a lot more money. So continue to do so and, and keep me posted on what you're blessing and, and, and giving birth to. Fifth question. Laura Green asks, OMG, I never want to get that addicted to money. When do you have time to spend with God and your family? And if you're a millionaire, why do you waste your time on YouTube? <laughs> Listen, uh, outside of the time I sleep, I'm spending every day with God and my family. You know, I have the blessing this day to, to uh, have my parents retire from both sides. My in-laws are retired. We have the opportunity to not have my wife not work for anybody else. Um, I have the opportunity for my wife to go to work with me every day. Uh, every day we get to drop off her kids at school every day. Uh, every day I get to say, you know, I'm going to cut loose from the office for 30, 45 minutes to roll around with them and wrestle with them and, and do whatever I want to do. I'm in control of my schedule. The only thing that's controlling me is my, is my faith. I don't have anybody else calling me boss. I don't have anybody else directing me what I got to do. I make my own decisions. So, you know, when, when I decided to separate myself from a salary, when I decided to separate, my, separate myself from just one or two clients and buy into this thing called entrepreneurship and stewardship, it's amazing the amount of uh, blessings and freedom um, that's afforded to us by embracing our faith, and uh, every minute is faithfully spent. How do I help other people? Think about this. I have a career out of business now that every day I'm thinking about how do I bless other people because the only way I make money, the only way I bless myself is to first bless somebody else first. What a noble way to make a living. So to answer your question, what am I wasting my time doing on, on, on YouTube? Well, sometimes people don't have access to these type of conversations. I wish I had access to these conversations when I was coming up in 1999, 2000, 2001. I didn't. I had to buy consulting time from people that can teach me. Now, if YouTube can be a resource for somebody out there, not just in America, but we're getting messages from people in, in Africa, in the Philippines, and in other parts of the world that are stumbling across our videos, if I can have an opportunity to 
provide an example of how God is blessing me that they can relatively bless them in their country. When amen, so be it. And I'm using YouTube as a tool to spread God's word. So Dennis M says, I will become a millionaire if I try. However, I already have God. So why would I want to try? Well, you don't have to try. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, back to the parable of the talents. If you feel you have God and God is going to be inspiring in you a message to be a blessing to other people, why wouldn't you not just try but do? You know, life doesn't give those triers. Life gives to those who do. And if you feel that you're walking off in faith, in my opinion, back to the stewardship issue, if you feel that you are a miracle, that you feel that you have a blessing in your life, you feel that God is using you in a very powerful way, it's one thing for God to be with you, but it's even more powerful to spread that message to have God be with other folks. So, my friend, you shouldn't try. You should do. And if God is on your side, then you need to spread that blessing to other people who are lost so they could be found, to people that are astray, so they can come back and give God the glory of how God is working in their lives because you decided to become faithful in your blessings to spread that seed around for him. Next question is by Jason Kent. Uh, he says, one talent of gold is worth about $1.4 million. No wonder the master was mad. That was 100K of interest lost. How much are our talents really worth? Makes you think. Great, great video. How much are our talents worth? It's infinite. You know, listen, you serve a God that owns everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm not thinking about, you know, you, you know, sometimes people try to put a limitation on God. I, I think our thought, our, our human mind tries to wrap around the vast greatness of God. And we try to put him in a box. You try to put a scale on him. You can't. And so when I'm thinking about a talent, I don't care what the amount is. I don't care to put a price on it. I don't care to try to scale it or measure it. All I care is about the principle that you're taking one talent to make it two. You take two talents to make it four. Then you take four talents to make it eight. Whatever that is, whatever your blessing is, it's your responsibility, I believe, to take whatever God has given you and multiply and pay it forward and and uh, be a blessing to not only yourself, but to other people around you. The principle is important, not the number. So last question by Mocha Bin Trill. <laughs> Just a friendly question. Uh, what do you mean by being a good person is not sustainable long-term? If you had another take, would you rephrase that? Thanks. If I had another take, I'll explain it further. I wouldn't, re I don't, I wouldn't rephrase it. I would just further explain by saying, if our value system is based on us just being a good person, then how do you know what standard that is on the value scale? You see, the thing is, unless it's anchored to something, you know, I can be a good person in 2021. I could be a good person in 2025. I could be a good person in 2030. But to what value system? What principle? What anchors it? And to me, I realize that I grow. I realize that I have my own shortcomings. I have my own misunderstandings. And if I'm just making my decision based on just being a good person, in my opinion, that's not good enough. I made bad decisions in my life. And I thought it's because I was being a good person. I made even worse decisions in my life because I thought I was being a better person. And I realized that there was no biblical truth, no biblical anchor, there was no biblical foundation behind it until I started plugging into the word and diving in. And I'm reading right now, you know, so many different scriptures and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes that anchors at least the decision-making process of money, wealth, prosperity, and success and happiness. You know, when, when you're looking at the person in the mirror, how do you know he or she is a good person? How do you know? You don't know. But if you base it on the Word of God, which has transcended the test of humankind, thousands and thousands and thousands of years, good times, bad times, good economy, bad economy, wars, famine, miracles, curses, and it stood the test of time, I need to base then my decisions based on not just the Word, but the living Word of God, which I find that's the Bible. So... I'll just further explain that just being a good person isn't good enough. It has to be based on biblical truths and principles. So therefore, you know that it stands a good test of time and also worships and honors God, if that's what you believe. All right, so there you have it. I hope I gave you guys some context and answers back to your question. But I would continue dropping in the comments section below your follow-ups, your questions. We'll come to another future episode. 
But at this point, I want to announce that contest, I promise you. So what do we call the series? The Biblical Perspective about Money, Finance, Wealth, Prosperity, Happiness, Generational Wealth Being. What do we call this? So for those of you that want to participate in this contest, okay? And uh, we'll start as of this video right here. And we'll end the contest. And we'll end the contest when we reach 75,000 subs, okay? When we're 75, we're at what, 60? with 63,000 subs right now. So we'll, we'll finish it off here when we reach 75,000, which could be a couple weeks, which could be a month, I don't know. Just depends on you. So here's my, con here, here, here's a contest. Please drop me what you think the name of this biblical series should be about wealth, money, and prosperity. Drop it in the comment section below. My team here will be screenshotting and grabbing and we'll be cataloging and harvesting some of your answers. And the winner to this contest, uh, not only will be highlighted and screenshotted in our next video, but we'd also like to, from me to you, I'd like to send you $500, $500 from my desk to your address, wherever you want me to send it. In addition to that, to sweeten the pot even more, I'd like to send another $500 to either your local church or your favorite charity in your name. Again, $500 to the winner that we picked the right title that we're going to be using for the longevity of these series, and another $500 to either your favorite charity or to your local church. So the contest period has begun, and it ends when we reach 75,000 subs here on the Seven Figure Squad. So that being said, everybody, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. Again, drop your thoughts, your comments, and questions below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications. Next time we upload our next episode, you get alerted so you don't miss another episode of the Seven Figure Squad. That being said, guys, on behalf of my team, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.